Okay, going back to uh, our original, well, the materials that I'm using for my accessories. Uh, I'm not going to line it with my best bit of blue or turquoise. Obviously, I want it to be covered by this, but I'm going to use a bit of plain white as a lining because, you know, you, you're not going to see the lining. I, I use the blue with the hooks at the top so it, all, it, so it, it does all uh, match in. Um, I'll find out where I am, yeah? What I want. Okay, I've taken a great big square out of there. That's no good to me. Bring it over this way. Fold it that way. Now, I need to measure this. Uh, <coughs> we need to make uh, a 16 inch long strip. No, 16, 32. A 32 inch long strip. So you could do 16 against the fold. Or as I'm gonna just about to do, ooh, look how badly cut this is. A minute, not good, is it? Look, see, I'm folding it naturally, and look, why? You've got, you know, you have to be aware of your fabric and shots do not cut it as you'd like. So I am just putting my, I think I've got to go over at least that much. And, well, I should have better off putting my bottom line on, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Right, so squared up my ruler on it. <coughs> And I'm going to do my note no, no line so that I know I've got a good edge because as you can see, look at, look at, you know, huh, really badly cut. Right, I want it 16 inches long by five and a half inches wide. So as this is the full width of the fabric, uh, I know that uh, I should <coughs> get 32 inches out of this. This is five and a half inches wide. Uh, if I quickly measure, <coughs> this is th there's a bolt here. So if I quickly measure this, <coughs> then this is 20. Oh, 21, 21 and three quarters, which is more than I need, right? So I can, I want it to be 16 on the fold. So if I put the fold around this way, so there's my fold, which I'm not going to cut, but put my naught naught on my fold and make it square, yeah? And then cut that 16. Yeah, keeping this, put it back with the other because you don't know. That's now my 32 inch long, five and a half inch wide strip. And I've got to do exactly the same with whatever fabric I decide I'm going to use as a lining, which won't be seen, so I'll use them at cheap. You get exactly where it is. Right here, paper roll holder. I have cut from white, just white. I'm not going to use my lovely precious um, thing because you're not going to see it really. And then I'm using my uh, other piece. Now these are very simple, cut on the fold, uh, strips five and a half inches wide and 16 inches long, which when opened up, are 32 inches 
do that and pour that and whatever your liner is going to be the next thing we're going to want is two uh pieces um that are two by six are these six let me just whoa well you see i'm a half inch short of six so i'm gonna say two by six but huh, who cares to be honest right so you know it's, these are only the little straps for the holder so if mine are half an inch short i won't cry right so uh turn it around i want to see if it were as long as i can get them and i want them two inches wide so two inches four inches that's what i want don't want that bit do want these bits and the first thing we're going to do is fold these in half finger press them oops we good jack finger press them as they say i use my nail pull that right pull that pull that right fold in half oh come on girls what's the matter with you right finger press it then into the middle we've done this before into the middle finger press it get in into the middle into the middle some people got these posh rulers aren't they for this finger press it or you could die in it obviously but I can't be bothered to it. Right. And then over into the middle. Yeah. I'm just going to put a clip on that. Give it some muscle memory while I'm waiting. Okay, so that's now in four. Um, and what we're going to do is stitch eighths of an inch from the edge at both sides. And I'll probably do it. I would elongate my stitch till to three. Because you know me, I like a longer top stitch. And to be honest, you know, there's not a lot to this. So. <sighs> oh. There's nothing wrong with me today. What's the matter? Just waiting for that bloody magazine to come. Margaret Brennan's got hers. I ain't got mine. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I'm not lying. Mind you, she said, you had yours first last time. Well, I did. I did, I did. But, you know, she was laughing at me, she was. Laughing at me. Oh, you want to cover yours then? Oh. Whatever. <laughs> See, we fight like cat and dog because really we're more like family than friends right um so that's those ready to go under the sewing machine as i say eight an inch from each red stitch both sides up and down those are going to be our hanging straps now i was thinking of doing this um as it is flim well kind of flimsy even doubled up i was thinking oh it's, it's not quite as stiff as i want it so i'm gonna cut a piece of um inter interfacing just to give that a bit of stiffness i'll go and find my interfacing and come back i decided to use a uh, heavyweight non uh non-woven uh interfacing I get mine from a company called Empress Mills, which is, oh, I don't know. I'm a southerner, so up north somewhere. It's up there. Probably on the doorstep of uh, people like Gail. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, 
this is a, you can use a medium if you've got if you've got a medium use a medium i mean you don't have to use anything it's just that i have decided because this is me isn't it that uh i want it so whew, using my big uh strap and go <laughs> that was it called in there babies right using my big uh stripology ruler i've got to get myself a straight edge obviously and it's a bit longer than what i want so what do i do oh, it's far too long for what i want but i you know i'm always using little bits here and there so it doesn't matter to me so what i'm just gonna do just fold it over again. <laughs> the non-woven fusibles. <sighs> Losing the plot. Losing the bloody plot. Don't want to cut the bag. Right. Now this is going to be a heavy cut because I've got a folded I don't know how many ways. Get myself a straight edge really pushing down get myself a straight edge and i want it the same as that five and a half five and a half wide i can get folded up put back in the bag that can go in the bin and then i got all of this i wasn't going to do it on both bits but doesn't matter i probably i might do another one so it doesn't matter Right, so, I want one bit that is 16, yeah, one bit that is 16 inches long. Well, sorry, one bit is 32, so folded over has to be 16. So if I say, where's 16? Around about there. So if I fold it about there, yeah, if I fold it about there, yeah. Then I can oh, let's put it on, tight it up, put the fold whew, under my ruler at naught. Not exactly tight either. Here we go. Oh, I haven't cut this very well at all. Never mind, it's only for uh, lining. Cut it at 16, got that big long piece left over, and a scrap that can go in the bin. And now I've got, thank you very much, whew, a piece, I'm hoping, that will be the same length. And I think I'll do it on my backing, a piece that is the same length. as my backing so i now need to go to the iron and fuse that onto my backing all right medium heat steam you name it okay so that's my fusible attached and i've got a really look at it it's white or white that's my linen -y bed sheet on the top yeah so right sides together yep Clip it, pin it, do whatever you want to do with it. Yeah? I'm going to clip the, both ends. So I, I am a creature of habit. i got to make sure both ends fit. Yep. Both ends. Oop. Then, keeping it nice in the middle. in the middle but we are going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around but we need to turn it so you need oh, let's just say you need to get your hand in so that's how I do it yep if I start there go all the way around and finish there and I am 
back stitching on the start and back stitching on the stop to give it a bit of leave you know a bit of strength and then we'll come back so i've got these to sew straight stitch i've got this to sew a quarter of an inch so i'll be swapping over to my quarter inch uh foot and show you that let's go to the machine now i've got bottom line uh which is a manufacturer's name in which is a, a 60 weight uh fine white in the bottom and i've got orofil uh 50 weight as uh, uh, the thread on the top both in white i'm just doing it in white okay so start off with and i've got my ordinary very ordinary presser foot on yep not worried about the ends of these because they're going to get tucked in and hidden away yeah oh changing up beg my pardon to three on my length of my stretch stitch and i am sewing approximately eighth of an inch from the edge Turn it round. Turn it round. Line myself up. And do it again. That's one done. Here we go. That's just my eye, I'm taking a note of Right, two done. Two top stitched. Okay, so those are our little hanging straps. Now, the next thing, as I said to you, we want to do a quarter of an inch seam all the way around, apart from where we need to get our hand in on the next bit so i'm oops i don't know why i'm doing that oh i've had a funny day today never mind tighten that right back up drop that foot i've got a machine you can drop feet on so i drop that as a high shank machine so and then i can just place that under there and pop that in now this is my uh, quarter inch foot and it's got a bar down this side to rest your material up against but the one thing you have to remember is to move is it on you no oh i'm on utility stitches that's why okay coming over moving out the way there we go where we are we have patchwork right okay there we go now so i've moved it over to give me my and the needles moved the needle has moved over to give me that quarter of an inch let me just go and get the project here's the project so i'm starting at this uh keeping my material towards that left hand edge oh few few forward and back to the line that I drew and then because oh, we're going in straight lines now we can, we can go a little faster just a little because we're just gently guiding nobody's pushing or pulling we're just guiding stop and take me what's it out and as I have told you where's my flipping pointer as I have told you and told you in lots of things we do, where is he? Here he is, my clover thing. On the side of your foot, you should have, there's mine, you should have a mark that tells you a quarter of an inch. 
when that mark keep going keep going keep going yep when that mark is equal with the end of your cloth you can lift your foot swivel put your foot back down and everything should be entirely in line for you to then continue all the way to the other end yep my mark is now in line pick it up swivel get rid of that put this on my lap because I don't like drag and off we go again now though I know I can go Oh, oh, hey, come on, come on, come on, come on, keep going, disguising, looks like my uh, inseline is a bit bigger, but it doesn't matter, keep going, keep going, keep going, nobody's pushing, nobody's shoving, we are just going I am doing I have to say because this is I put it onto a quarter inch uh, thing I am doing a very tight stitch here I think I'm doing 1.80 oh, but I don't want to do 1.80 but never mind it doesn't matter and it's slightly pushing my fabric out but never the matter oh as tight as that at the end yeah let it go let it tidy it up but what i want to do is take note now on my interlining underneath which is more regular <coughs> than the material on top now it, it does yeah so i'm going to chop a bit off my material shifted slightly and you have to take a view of these things when you're working yourself if your material shifts well then you need to uh, address that as you're working yeah which is what I've just done and look you see I know I got that to chop off okay now <sighs> and this time we're only going down well it's quite a way but we're going down to our next um pen uh, pen mark fusible pen so we know is it fusible friction pen so we know that it irons out not that it matter anyway because it's on the back of the uh, material the fabric but it will iron out so when we get there back stitch a few to give it some uh, space. Now I'm left, hopefully, yay, with a hole for me to put my hand in. So that's that's the two straps done, and I can take. I'm going to take off my. Uh, oh, don't move, don't rush. I can take off my uh, quarter inch foot and put my normal presser foot back on because I'm not going to. Woo! Oh, hello, Jack. Get a grip because uh, I'm not going to use that quarter inch foot again anymore. So I'm back to normal foot. Let's go back to the table and see what we do next. So having sewed, uh, oh, hang on, where's all my clips gone? I've left them over here. Throw them back in the sink right so having uh sewed it and left our gap to put our hand in naturally want to turn it out but what we do want to do is to cut the uh corners and as my interface and has decided to be no i'll just leave it right so what we need to do is cut the corners so without cutting your stitching just snip your corners yep and 
and on that long edge where I you see it's too long I don't want all that held up in my seam so I'm just cutting that off as well right so what we need to do now is put our hands in and wiggle 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 all the way to the bottom put my thumb in the corner and use my other finger put my thumb in the corner use my other finger to push it through yep the last one corner yep and then I go back in keeping that corner safe I go back in and whoa, 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 wiggle 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 all the way to the end of there put my thumb in the corner put my finger in and bring that through now you see I've got two corners so now I can go if you carry and pull out that end now we've got to do exactly the same with the other end wiggle 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 all the way down and I'm going to go for the opposite I have to go for the corner first the way first right thumb in the corner finger on top of my thumb push it through got one back in bring thumb in the corner finger on the top push it back through got the other two corners now Snake this, isn't it? Right, there he is. Now, having turned it all through, I get my turning tool, clover, and I go up to the corners with my turning tool and gently, and I mean gently, gently poke out those corners down the other end and gently poke out those corners now you can use a chopstick is good for this do not use the pointed end of scissors because you will go through now having done that we need to roll the edges I uh, oh I got I got a I've got to bend down because my back's doing it, right? So, you take the seam, you try and flatten out the seam, and then, between your fingers, you roll the seam to get it to sit, to get it to sit on that seam where you want it. You roll it so that you, you're bringing the material together, yep, on that seam. Go round and roll it everywhere. I have to give it a pull, or a tug. But this is this is what we do. We roll the seams, and I to oh, I should say I see I've got a bit missing there. That's my hand bit. Right, okay, no problem. So we're rolling the seams, and obviously at this stage, if you had missed something, you know, not caught it under the stitching. It would show and then you're still at a stage where you've got the gap you could go back and fix it so that's that edge more or less done and then exactly the same with the other edge and then obviously we're going to go and press it yeah so i mean i would take I, I i will take more time over this than i'm showing you but i'm quickly showing you me rolling it to get it to sit where i want on the seat it's little attention to detail like this that makes all the difference in the finished product okay now uh we are going to go and press it and naturally i am gonna what i what i like to do is to tug can you see what i'm doing i'm tugging on the outside slightly so that it naturally will <coughs> 
cut together as it should. So just clipping that. Yeah, just clipping that. I'm going to give it a quick press under the iron carefully, making trying to make sure that my white doesn't show through. I'm going to give it a press under the iron and then we are going to do a eighth of an inch top stitch all the way around completely and that will close off this turning hole all right so we're just left with a double-sided strip top stitching so i'm going up to three uh, yeah size three uh, ordinary foot on using all the same cotton this is white or a fill 50 on the top and bottom line 60 on the bottom I have pressed here is my gap yeah and as you can see I've nicely pressed it so starting a little way from the corner because you never want to do anything on a corner yeah I am just going to do an eighth of an inch. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. Needle down so I know where I am. Yep, that's where I want to be. Size three length of stitch. And Now, this is an ordinary foot. Has it got the quarter of an inch guide? No, it doesn't. So, you are going to have to use your eye. And if it's not enough, one more stitch and use your eye. And no, it's not enough, one more stitch. Now use your eye. Yep. Sometimes you've got to, you know. Oop, too much. So, back stitch it. Turn it. And off we go. It, it's get, it's, it, you see it got a little stuck there. Because of all the bulk in the corner, I, I if if I had been, I could have used my all to 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 help it through, but I I wasn't you know wasn't with it. The other thing you could have done was just look slightly, just you know, just slightly lift your foot. That's another thing you could have done. If you get in circumstances like that. I am going to do this time. See, what I love with my machine is I can go like the clappers or I can do one stitch at a time. It, it, like It's not a runaway foot. It, it's a very intuitive foot. Right, okay. 
come on now I'm meeting up now with my original stitching so I am going to do overlock it by about six stitches that's enough to stop any stitch work from coming apart yeah just overlock it by about six stitches and you you wouldn't know you'd be very hard to press to see where i started and stopped okay so that's that that is the toilet roll band being done uh, i think the next thing we need to do is to before we do anything else is mm, i'm gonna have to go and consult my notebook but we need to put the um bands that we made in here and then sew across to hold them tight i am not entirely sure what happens right now but uh what i'd like to say is that judging on this picture you can see that i have put the straps in and i have done a double line of stitching to secure them to the inside then from the bottom i i tested it by putting in a toilet roll and then from the bottom um fold i think i measured up i think it's about seven and a quarter inches but you need to test your toilet rolls and see how they go and then draw yourself a line across the entire project which you then need to take to the um sewing machine and sew a single line of stitching it roll in yep and let's plop the other toilet roll in and I, I I'm using uh, these toilet rolls are uh, what do you call them mm. what's the word for it uh, Not bello. What's the word I'm looking for? Quilted. Quilted toilet roll. So they are sick. Okay, so there's our toilet roll holder. Now, I did ask, where's it gone? Where has it gone? Right. Uh, oh, yeah. I asked my husband to cut me a bit of dowling, uh, which I will put through here to hang this up with yeah but before i do that i don't think that's good enough for me i want it to be i know it's nice but i want it to be a bit prettier than that uh so i am going to put a couple of bows on there obviously tape toilet rolls out uh and i'm going to put just a couple of bows on the top so there we are and and just to put those bows on they're pre-made bows that i had in stock and uh i just used uh my buttonhole my not hole my button um foot that gives you a simple three to four millimeter tack down stitch just to secure the buttons the, which then secures the bows you could put buttons on pretty buttons i mean there are a load of different things that you could put on instead but i just thought that that looked pretty so there we are that's our first project uh in the um uh, series that i'm going to do i thought i'd start with the easiest one um just to get you in the mood and obviously there'll be plenty more to follow which i am going to be um doing in in this lovely uh lewis and irene fabric but you choose fabric that suits your home and suits your bedroom colors